Mold Design Create mounting bosses, a core, and a cavity for a mold of this telephone. In this tutorial, we'll create the core and cavity for this telephone model. The model of the telephone will be provided to you, but we'll add some fastening features to the model. Then we'll use the mold tools to generate the core and cavity. To begin, let's click here to open the model. Make sure Real View Graphics is disabled. You may not see this option if you don't have a certified graphics card or a certified driver installed. Next, go to File, Save As, and save the model as My Telephone. Next, we'll create the mounting bosses. Expand Boss Extrude 1 and show Sketch 14. This will help us locate the mounting bosses. Select the mounting boss feature under Insert Fastening Feature Mounting Boss. Select this face to locate where the mounting boss will be placed. Next, select the circular sketch for the mounting boss position. And for the direction of the boss, select this top face here. Under Boss Type, select Pin Boss and click Hole. Under the Boss Heading, key in 5 for the diameter. Select a mating face and select the same face we selected back in Step 4. Enter a draft angle of 1 degree and enter a height of the hole to be 20. Under Fins, set the number of fins to 0 and click OK. Repeat this same procedure on the opposite side of the part to create the mounting boss at this location. Next, we'll create two more symmetric mounting bosses by using the mirror tool. To begin, let's create a reference plane. Select the plane tool. For the first reference, select this point. For the second reference, expand the feature flyout and select the front plane and click OK. Since we don't need Sketch 14 anymore, right click on Sketch 14 and select Hide. Next, select Mirror and select the plane that we've created from the feature flyout. And for the features to mirror, select both mounting bosses. Make sure they both appear in the features to mirror list after selecting them and click OK. Now we'll check our model for draft using the draft analysis tool. Select isometric and then select the Draft Analysis tool. This tool can be found on the Evaluate tab or since we'll be using the Mold Tools right click on one of these Command Manager tabs and select Mold Tools. Select the Mold Tools tab and select Draft Analysis. For the direction of pull, select the top plane and set the draft angle to 0 0.5 degrees and then turn on Face Classification. Rotate the view to see which faces have positive draft, negative draft, or required draft. The colors should look like this, not necessarily like this. To complete our check for draft, let's take a closer look at faces that require draft. Select the front view, then zoom out a little bit, and then use the Zoom to Area tool to zoom into this region. The yellow color indicates that these faces have a draft angle of less than 0 0.5 degrees. Click OK. And now let's add draft. Select the draft tool. In the property manager, 
Select Parting Line as the type of draft. Set the draft angle here to be 1 degree, and for the direction of pull, select the top plane once again. Do a zoom to fit to see the preview arrow. Make sure it points down. Click on it, and this flips the direction. For the parting line draft, we'll select all the edges on the bottom of the model. You could select these edges individually, or if I right click on this edge, and then click on Select Tangency, that will select all the surrounding edges. Click OK. The draft analysis results update, and we can see these faces no longer require draft. Since our part will shrink when it is ejected from a mold, we'll next compensate for this effect by using the Scale feature. Select Scale. Select the body. The body assumes the name of the last feature applied to it, and scale uniformly about the centroid by a factor of 1.05, and click OK. Next, we'll create a parting line to separate the core from the cavity. To review model ejection requirements, click here. To create a parting line, select the Parting Lines tool. Once again, select the top plane for the direction of pull. Do a zoom to fit. And this time, make sure the preview arrow points upward. Key in 0 0.5 degrees. And select Draft Analysis. And eight edges are selected that define the path of the parting line. Also, the model is colored positive, no draft, negative, and straddle with these four colors. The tutorial uses cyan, but the default in SOLIDWORKS is blue for straddle faces. Rotate your model and zoom in to inspect some of these regions to make sure there are no yellow or blue faces. This model meets the requirements needed to separate the core from the cavity. Click OK to the parting line tool and save your work. Next, we'll need shutoff surfaces to fill in these holes. Click on Shutoff Surfaces. And in the Property Manager, all the through holes appear in the Edges list. Make sure Knit, Filter Loops, and Show Callouts is selected. And also, all loops should be set to Contact. To learn more about other options other than the Contact option, click here. A Contact Shutoff Surface looks like this. A Tangent Shutoff Surface looks like this. Click OK. If you rotate your model, you'll see uneven coloring. This is because additional surfaces were generated, and these surfaces are coincident with the solid body. A closer look at some of the surfaces that were generated is shown here. If I scroll up in my Feature Manager tree and expand Surface Bodies, you'll see a Cavity Surface Body set to green, and a Core Surface Body set to red, and our part is changed to blue. Next, we'll create a parting surface. Click on the Parting Surfaces tool. Under Mold Parameters, make sure Perpendicular to Pole is selected. And under Parting Surface, set the distance to 10. Finally, under Options, make sure Knit All Surfaces and Show Preview are turned on, and click OK. Next, to prepare for the tool split, we'll create a reference plane perpendicular to the pole direction that we'll extrude a rectangular mold from. Rotate your view to look at the bottom side of the model and zoom in on this region. Select this face. Select the plane tool. And reorient to a front view. Offset the plane by 20 millimeters and click OK. Next, we'll use the tooling split tool and sketch a rectangle on the plane we've just created. We'll turn off the draft analysis tool, then select tooling split. If your plane was already selected, like mine, 
This will put you in a sketch mode. If it wasn't already selected or you're not in the sketch mode, please select the plane you created now. Reorient normal to the sketch and change the display style to hidden lines removed. Next we'll draw and dimension a rectangle as shown. If your view orientation does not match the graphic depicted here, change the display style back momentarily to shaded with edges and change to a top view. Now we'll draw this sketch. Once you are finished, select Exit Sketch. Set the display style to wireframe and change the view to isometric. Set the depth in Direction 1 to be 90 and in Direction 2 to be 70. Turn on the checkbox to interlock surface and set the draft angle to 3 degrees and click OK. Next we'll use a move body tool to separate the core from the cavity. Select insert features and click on move slash copy. Select the cavity body and select the Translate slash Rotate button. Make sure Copy is cleared and key in 160 for the Y direction and click OK. To display only the core and cavity, we'll hide all other bodies. Scroll up in the Feature tree, right click on Parting Line 1 and select Hide and right click on the Surface Bodies folder and select Hide. To make the appearance of the mold stand out, scroll down to the bottom of the feature tree and right click on Tooling Split 1, click on the Appearances drop down and select Tooling Split 1. Set the color to orange and under the Advanced settings, click on the Illumination tab and drag the Transparent Amount slider to the right about halfway and click OK. Change the display style once again to shaded with edges and let's save our part. Next we'll save our part as an assembly which makes it easier to add other supporting hardware. We'll rename some of the bodies in our feature tree to make them more easily identifiable. Click on Tooling Split 1 to select it, pause for a moment and click again to prompt for a rename. Call this body Core and repeat this process for the body move copy and call this one cavity. Next right click on the core body and select insert into new part. Select the browse button and call this part my telephone dash core and click save. Then click OK to the property manager. Click yes to the message about the units. To return to our mold part, select the window pull down and select My Telephone and repeat this process for the cavity. Next we'll create an assembly from these two parts. Select New, Assembly, and click OK. Click on the core and click OK. Select Insert Components, click on the cavity and click OK. 
And that completes this tutorial. Thank you.